I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and this is my Freestyle Libre 3 review based on my own experience wearing the sensor for two weeks. The Freestyle Libre 3 was FDA cleared in early 2022, but only just became commercially available here in the US recently. So actually, according to my pharmacist, I was the first one to pick up a Freestyle Libre from her pharmacy. So of course I wanted to try it out and give you the download of what I think about it. First, I'll show you how to insert the Freestyle Libre 3 sensor. Then I'll give you an overview of what Libre 3 can do, how it's different from Libre 2, and of course, how I like it. So let's get the sensor on. The sensor is super easy to apply. I wore for two weeks. Let's talk about it. Well, first of all, Freestyle Libre 3 is smaller. It's not just smaller than the Libre 2, it's actually smaller than any of the other CDMs available in the market right now. So you can see this is comparison. This is Dexcom T6, this is Libre 3. It's tiny. And Libre 3 is a real CGM, so continuous glucose monitor. It's no longer just a finger stick replacement. So that means that you no longer have to scan your sensor to get your blood sugar readings. It would actually automatically send your blood sugar readings to the app every minute. Libre 3 does not have a receiver. You have to have a compatible smartphone. I know this is not gonna work for everyone, so that's kind of a bummer. Another major change is that the Libre 3 comes pre-assembled in a one-piece applicator, so this one. It means now all you have to do is pull this out of the package, insert the sensor. What has not changed since the Libre 2 is that the sensor still lasts two weeks on the body, 14 days. It has a 60 minutes warm-up period, so that's a period where you will not get any blood sugar readings. And it has the same accuracy as the Libre 2 sensor as well as adjustable alarms. However, you cannot turn off the urgent lower alarm. That's the alarm that sound when blood sugars hit 55 milligrams per deciliter. Um, per FDA, you're not allowed to turn that off. Now let's go over my experience wearing the Freestyle Libre 3 sensor, what I liked and what I would like to see differently. <laughs> um, because honestly, it's an okay CGM but I think it lacks a few things to become a really great CGM. What I love about the Freestyle Libre 3 system is the size, that it stays really well on the skin, and that it comes pre-assembled, meaning less waste. And the reduction in waste is significant. It includes a reduction of 41% in plastic waste and a reduction of 43% in paper waste compared to the previous Libre systems. Wearing the sensor didn't bother me at all. I would actually forget that I was wearing it. I wouldn't bump it on things. It would get caught on clothing. However, I would say that the actual sensor part, so the part that sits underneath the skin, seems to be a little on the thicker side. And it did leave me more of a, what's it called, a bruise or a bump than what I usually see from when I wear Dexcom. Since you can only use the Freestyle Libre app to see your blood sugars, I wanna focus on the app real quick. So I don't love it. In my opinion, um, the Freestyle Libre 3 app is kind of stuck in the finger stick mentality. Let me explain. What I really appreciate and what I find really valuable about using a CTM is that I can see not just my blood sugars right now, but also where they were, where they're going. In the Freestyle Libre 3 app, I can see what my blood sugar is right now, and then I can see a 12 hour overview. So my blood sugars for the last 12 hours but it's very high level, and in my opinion, it's too wide of a view. I'm used to being able to zoom in, be able to zoom in and see what were my blood sugars an hour ago, three hours ago. And with the Freestyle Libre app, I'm not able to go in and pinpoint, okay, well, it's great that my blood sugar is 120 right now, but what was it exactly an hour ago? So I think that's, that's a real miss. And don't get me wrong, I think a 12-hour view or a 24-hour view are great. I think they're great for retrospective analysis, just not for here and now decision making. The Freestyle Libre 3 app also have adjustable high alerts, low alerts, and signal loss alerts. Um, it would be nice if you could customize them a little bit more, like say during the work hours, I might want different alerts, but you know, overall, I think the alerts do what they need to do. You also have an urgent low alarm that will sound when blood sugars hit 55 milligrams per deciliter. That one cannot be turned off. In my opinion, this is all good. This is what a CGM is supposed to do. Before we get to accuracy, I wanna talk a little bit about reliability. Because unfortunately, this Libre 3 sensor had a little bit of, 
reliability issues. Um, and that's just not a good feeling when it comes to a CTM. I do know it can happen. So maybe it was just a specific sensor that was having a bit of issues. But this sensor started out by giving me compression lows for the first two nights. Um, it was giving me sensor errors in the first few days and it was giving me a random fake high in the last few days. A compression low is not a real low blood sugar. It's a situation where you put pressure on the sensor and it will give you a faulty low reading. So I'm a side sleeper and since you wear the Freestyle Libre 3 on your arm, I would be sleeping on it and the first two nights it just woke me up with compression lows. Not ideal and especially when it's giving you fake low readings the first few nights, it's a little harder to build confidence in the system. Now let's talk about the probably most critical thing, which is accuracy. Because if your CGM is not accurate, there's not really any point of wearing it. When it comes to accuracy and CGMs, that is measured in MART, M-A-R-D. And the lower the MART, the better. The Freestyle Libre 3 MART is 7.9% and the Freestyle Libre 2 Mart is listed at 9.3%. So that's a huge difference, right? However, Abbott, which is the manufacturer of Libre, have told us that there is no accuracy difference between Libre 2 and Libre 3. Which sounds weird, but supposedly the data has just been cut a little differently. And here you can see the Freestyle Libre 3 data. And as you can see here, actually accuracy really depends on the segments, where we are in the sense of lifetime. So you can see day one to three, it's actually more accurate than it is in the middle of the sense of lifetime. And it's supposedly even more accurate in the last three days. Same thing for PEATS, you can see here in the bottom, it's actually, actually not as accurate for pediatric patients as it is for older adults. But overall, regardless of the sensor 7.9% or the 9.3 of Libre 2, it's still considered one of the most accurate sensors on the market. And that's also what I found. I actually found the Freestyle Libre 3 to be really accurate. I did finger sticks along with wearing the sensor, and I found that on average, uh, the Libre was five milligrams per deciliter lower than my finger sticks. So not really anything significant. It's not enough for me to change my decision making, for example, when it comes to dosing my insulin. So on average, I would say five milligrams per deciliter difference is irrelevant. Although I, on average, found it to be really accurate, I did find that it was fairly inaccurate the first two days that I was wearing the sensor. At one point, it was 36 milligrams per deciliter off. Another point, it was 27 milligrams per deciliter off. As a rule of thumb, I would like to be able to calibrate my sensor if it's more than 20 milligrams per deciliter off, but with the Freestyle Libre system, you cannot do that. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, um, Libre also gave me two compression lows and it overestimated some highs, so it, you know, it was a little hard to build confidence in the system, but overall I did find it to be accurate. And the final point I want to address is the price. If you have insurance and your insurance covers Freestyle Libre 3, how much you're going to pay is going to depend on your deductible and your copay. So I think if you're interested in this system, a good first step is to reach out to your insurance company and simply ask, you know, what would it cost you to use this system? And remember to ask if you need to meet your deductible before they start paying. But let's look at the price if you're paying cash. I like to use GoodRx to look up prices uh, for cash pay. So let's just do that together. And as you can see here, if we were to get one Libre 3 sensor, and that again lasts for two weeks, so 14 days, that is $63.77. That's equivalent of a daily cost of $4.60 or a monthly cost of $127.54. It's supposed to be priced at the same level as Libre 2, but when I looked it up, it looks like you can get the Libre 2 slightly cheaper at Walmart. And that was my review of the Freestyle Libre 3. So will I get it? Probably not. And for a lot of the same reasons that I didn't get on board with the Freestyle Libre 2. I don't need a finger stick replacement. I need a CGM. So until the Libre app is updated, until they get integrated with more devices and they actually allow for calibration. I'm not going to get on board, although the size is attractive. But I do think it's a significant upgrade from the Freestyle Libre 2. So if you're already a Libre fan, I think you like the Freestyle Libre 3. 
Assuming, of course, that you have a phone that's compatible with the system. If not, it's going to be a large upfront cost as you'll have to go out and buy a new phone. So will you be getting the Freestyle Libre 3 or have you already tried it? What did you think? Leave me a comment below this video. While you're at it, please also give this video a like. Also, if you like my content, if you'd like to see more from me, remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell. That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching.